So as we're going through the course, I want you to think of a couple major themes that we're going to talk about in plant biology. First, that there's a hierarchy of organization. On all levels of biology, on all levels of plant biology, we see hierarchy. We can look at the individual cell, or we can look, break the cell down and see what the cell is made of, or we could put the cell together to make organs such as leaves, put the leaves and the trunks together to make a plant, or even have a complete ecosystem. And at each level, we can learn something new about how the plant works. The cell is the basic structure of plant biology. It's the basic structure of all biology. And a lot of what we understand how a plant works, we understand by understanding how a plant cell works. We're going to be dealing a lot with evolution. Now, you're not going to need to know, have any background in genetics or background in molecular biology, but we're going to talk about evolution and DNA to understand that what we see in modern plants is a result of their genes. It's a result of changes through evolution. Now, at each of these levels, there's what we call structure and function. For example, if we look at a leaf, what's its function? I think we all know the function of a leaf is to absorb the light, the energy that a plant needs for photosynthesis. So what's its structure? It's flat to, in order to absorb all that light. But what's the structure of a leaf in a cactus? It's a thorn. And it has a different structure because its function is different. It's actually trying to conserve area. It doesn't want to lose water. So it's minimalized its leaf. So everything we see about a plant, its structure serves a particular function. And the function helped um, the selection through evolution to the modern forms of plants that we see. And at every level, there's an interaction between the individual and its environment. Now, this is obvious when we talk about ecology, when we see a plant, a tree in its ecosystem. We'll learn about how plants communicate, how they interact, plant one plant to a second plant. Do they actually communicate with each other? Can we say they're talking to each other? But there's communication not only between individuals, but there could be indiv communication between leaves, or there could be communication between cells, or communication between parts of cells. So in each level, there's an interaction between the, plant, the individual and its environment. Now, plants have a huge amount of diversity. I mean, look at all of these flowers. All of these flowers are formed by the same basic genes, but slight changes in how they're regulated gives us this beautiful diversity of plant biology. But because the genetic basis of flower development is the same, we see a unity in plant form and a unity in plant biology. Now, in this course, we can't deal with the thousands of types of plants, but what we're going to learn about will be true for, let's say, 95% of them because of this unity. And all of this is connected to evolution. You cannot understand biology without understanding evolution. The modern form of a plant really shows how the plant evolved through millions of years of selective pressures. But not only have selective pressures affected plants, human pressures of selected plants. I just want to give one example here. So this picture here in the middle, this is wild mustard. It grows you know, in fields in many parts of the world. But broccoli and cauliflower and kale and Brussels sprouts and other brassica vegetables all evolved from wild mustard because of the intervention of humans. We selected for a wild mustard that might have a little head growing on it, a naturally occurring mutant, and we turned that into modern broccoli by our own selection. Actually, genetically, broccoli and wild mustard are essentially identical, slight changes in one or two genes. The same thing with cauliflower. Actually, in the lab, we can take a model plant that's like wild mustard, and by changing one gene, cause it to make little broccolis at its end. So you could get a huge change in form by a very slight change in the DNA.